Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be taking a closer look at the Big Chief Studios Dr. No figure. Last year, I took a closer look at the other figure released in this limited series of two, which was Sean Connery's James Bond. Overall, I was super impressed with that figure, and I was keen to get my hands on the Dr. No to accompany him. I finally managed to do just that, so let's start off by looking at this packaging. Of course, it's in that 1-6 scale standard oblong box, but I really like the design and look of this packaging. This is a lot more colourful uh, than you might expect from Big Chief Studios. So I really like that it's got that sort of gun barrel effect. Uh, I think they've done a nice job with these sort of glossy elements to it, which catches the light very, very nicely. I really like how we have the dots taken from the opening sequence of Doctor No as well. I think this is a really fun reference to that film. Obviously, it has the logo in there and then we have some of these images uh, photos taken of the figure from production which uh, look really good and very attractive this carries all the way over to the side panel as well as well as that continuing that theme of the gun barrel uh, which looks really good if we flip it to the other side of the side panel we can see that this is a lot more bland it just has the 007 logo but it still looks really nice and it's a it's quite a nice presentation all in all when we finally flip it and look at the back of the packaging you can see that they've opted to go for a black and white or grayscale images of the two figures in this series. We see James Bond at the top of the packaging and Dr. No at the bottom. This is a little bit disappointing. I think this could have been better used, really. We could have had a, a more colourful images on here and maybe something that was specific to just Dr. No rather than being advertising both figures in this series. Although I'm not averse to that. Uh, I just think it could have been a little bit more brightly coloured and just a bit more attractive in the way they approach this design. The top outer card is quite a thick card which is quite nice and reassuring. This slides off nice and easily to reveal the inner inlay inside which is nice. This protects the figure. We pull that out. We can see they've done a nice job here presenting some of the images. Again, it's got the theme of the dots there. Nice and colourful. Very nice photos taken of this figure. And if we flip it round, we have that sort of diorama stand that goes behind the figure of Dr. No's office. This looks really, really good. I think they've done a nice job of replicating what we see on screen here. And this is a really fun touch. The figure itself is nicely and securely contained within this plastic inlay, but once you free the figure from the packaging, there's something ever so slightly off and disappointing about it. And I think this has something to do with the body mould and the, in particular the shoulders, where it just looks a little bit lopsided and just a little bit too bulky for this character. But let's take a look at this head sculpt. Now on the surface, this is actually really good. I think it's actually caught a quite nice likeness of Joseph Wiseman, and it's pretty effective. There's a lot of texture going on in terms of the paint apps they've used there. We can see a little bit of uh, shadow there on the face where the stubble might be just hinting at coming through. Uh, I think there's some really nice texture in the hair, and the overall skin tone is really nicely done. This looks really authentic and, and realistic, and, and that's great. And yet there's just something ever so slightly off about this sculpt and I think it's the left eye or the right eye <laughs> if you're looking at it on screen. Uh, it just looks like it's squinting, it looks a little bit smaller and I'm not quite sure why they've gone for that really because that isn't a character trait that I'm familiar with with this character on screen. It's not something I've ever noticed before and I can't really see one in this still here that I've put up so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. That just looks a little bit off to me and it's not the first time I've seen this on a big cheap figure. They actually did a, something similar with the ninth Doctor figure as well. Um, so I'm not sure if it's an issue with their sculpting, but there's something just off about that and it's really distracting. Now for anyone who's curious how this compares with the Sideshow collectible sculpt from all those years ago, you can see obviously clearly there's there's no comparison here. The, the Sideshow collectibles was from a different time, the sculpting is a lot more simple, soft, uh, and doesn't have the same nuance or complexity as this uh, new uh, sculpt has from Big Chief Studios. Obviously this is vastly superior and just you know, wipes the floor with the original release. Likewise, the tailoring on the costume is much more refined, much more nuanced uh, and authentic to what we see on screen, as you would expect. Uh, as you can see here, though, there is definitely an issue with the shoulders. I've definitely persevered with this to try and get them to be more level, and certainly I can get it to be a bit better than it is, but something just doesn't look quite right with this. And there's something else that was really bugging me. You may notice that rather unseemly, unsightly white line at the bottom of his jacket there. Well, that is actually Velcro, which prompted me to pull that apart and as you can see it's just a very thick clumsy velcro piece which 
I'm not 100% against, but when you open up, you can see there's nothing underneath. There isn't a vest and there isn't a shirt. And crucially, there should be a shirt here <laughs> because if we look at the top of the jacket, you can see uh, at the cuffs of his jacket, at the top of his collar there, there is the shirt piece poking through, but this is just sort of sewn in to create the effect rather than there actually being a shirt underneath. Now, this is really disappointing and unexpected for a high-end collectible like this. His hands are nicely sculpted in a sort of PVC, very shiny, very reflective plastic, so they really capture the look of what we see on film, and of course they're moulded into one uh, stoic shape there. So I think this works really well, again, pretty authentic to what's on screen. My issue with them though is that you'll notice there is this rather big gap between the joint and his wrist there. Uh, there is a separate piece which you can kind of slide up and down to meet this. So this is fine, they've built it into it so you can look after this and, and make this look more presentable, but again I was very surprised that the approach of this. Obviously I want the articulation, but I thought there would might have been another way of capturing this and than having this two separate piece approach, which looks a little bit clumsy and you know there is a danger that it's gonna slide away and you're gonna to have to keep fixing that from time to time. The rest of the tailoring is neatly fitted and sharply pressed. And if we look closely at his shoes, you will see that his socks are actually sewn into the shoes themselves. And if we lift that leg there, we can see that the sock actually does go up the rest of the leg, which is a nice touch. I think they've done a good job with this all in all. And the shoes, uh, although quite simple, actually have a little bit of texturing, a little bit of wear on them, which is uh, nice and authentic and realistic looking, which is really good. If we look underneath the soles, we can see that they're flat. There's no tread on them whatsoever. But again, this looks pretty authentic. I like how there's a bit of a wash on this to make it look like he's actually, you know, used these shoes. He's been walking around and got some scuff marks marks on which is pretty cool. Articulation wise, there is a ball joint at the base of the neck. There's nothing in the head itself, but he can move his head from side to side. He can lean it left and right, and he can rotate it all around pretty comfortably. This also means that he can bend his head forwards and backwards, a pretty healthy range as well. So this is really good stuff. Now he does have ball joints in the shoulder, so of course he can lift his arms up and out at a pretty healthy distance. There is a complementary bicep swivel at the top there and double joints at the elbow, so he can get his arm all the way back there. And there is a swivel here as well that allows that arm to rotate all the way around. Now, at the wrist, there's another ball joint that you can see there, so that hand can rotate all the way around, but it'll also hinge forwards and backwards as well, which is really nice stuff. Now, there are two points of articulation in the torso, as we've seen. There's one at the top in the chest area and one at the bottom. Most of the articulation really comes from the joint in the waist. It allows him to bend from side to side, turn left to right, and of course, bend forwards and backwards as well. Now, there's not a huge range of motion here, but there's enough to be able to get him into various positions. Now, there are more ball joints in the hips, of course, so the legs will kick out to the side. There's a straight cut at the top of the thigh as well, allowing that leg to move from side to side. The legs will kick forwards, they'll kick backwards a really healthy distance, and there's a double joint at the knee, so you can kick that lower leg all the way to the top there. There's another ball joint at the ankle, so the leg will move from side to side, and it will also hinge forwards and backwards. Accessories wise, he does come with quite a few goodies, admittedly not as much as we saw with the Sean Connery figure, but nevertheless a pretty fun and specific set of accessories to this character. Surprisingly, he only comes with one extra pair of hands. These are both open or flat palmed hands. He has his cigarette, his bottle of champagne, a Buddha statue and his tarantula in a cage. The cage is a nice piece, it's very, very lightweight, but it is nicely sculpted and painted, and if you can kind of just glimpse through it, you can see it's a transparent kind of plastic they've used inside, and you can just about see the tarantula climbing up the side of the cage there, which is a nice touch. Sadly, it doesn't open up or do anything else, but it is a nice little display piece. Aside from this, he does also come with his display stand and this frosted glass nameplate that slides into the front of the stand and when you touch the back of the base, lights up and illuminates. And uh, this looks pretty cool. Uh, I wish they'd done something around the actual top of the base itself so it was kind of uplit the figure a bit more, but this is still a really nice touch. I think this works really well. Now, some people have had issues with their bases. Uh, this definitely is something that I think Big Chief Studios has struggled with in the past, but I have to say all of my Bond ones have been absolutely fine. I have to say, despite only having two pairs of hands, this is pretty much 
all you need. In fact, he can hold all of his props and accessories with pretty much just the two that he comes with. The extra two flat palms are just the icing on the cake, and I don't think you need any more than this. He has no problem holding his cigarette. This fits nice and securely between his fingers. It, it does feel very tight there. It doesn't feel like it's gonna, ever going to come loose or fall away, which is fantastic. Likewise, holding the tarantula cage there between his uh, thumb and his forefinger works really, really well uh, and is surprisingly effective, and he has no issues whatsoever holding his champagne paintball. So all of these look really, really good, very effective, and pretty authentic to what we see on screen as well. Of all the pieces, the only one that feels a little bit disappointing is the champagne bottle. This feels like a very light plastic. It's obviously clearly transparent. You can see there's no liquid inside, and the label just feels, well, like a transfer. It just feels a bit cheap somehow. Uh, so this is a little bit disappointing. It would have been nice if they'd made the effort to make it look as if the bottle was at least full or fizzy or it should have had a bit more weight to it. But that's a very minor criticism. All in all, this still looks very presentable and it does the job when it's on display and that's the ultimate purpose, I suppose. Now, we can also utilise that display backdrop as well, that card art to put behind the figure, uh, and this looks really quite good. I really like that these figures come with this. It definitely gives it a lot more character and a bit more nuance, a bit more of a diorama feel to your displays, uh, which is really fun. Now, obviously, the card is a little bit shorter than the figure when he's on the stand, but if you persevere, if you elevate this up or you take the figure off the stand, then this looks a lot more comfortable, and it is quite effective, as you can see here, when you, you do a bit more of a close-up. Uh, this looks uh, a lot more fun. So all in all, this is a, a, an interesting figure. I have very mixed feelings about it. This is not a bad figure by any stretch of the imagination. I think the sculpt for the most part is good. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that eye there. That looks a little bit strange. Likewise, the tailoring of the costume is nicely done. It is a very simple costume, of course, but I'm really perplexed at why they didn't go the extra mile and give him some underneath clothes, uh, particularly a shirt. That would have looked really, really nice. Uh, maybe there was some logistics to get it to look right, but this just feels very cheap. And I really, I'm not a fan of that Velcro piece. I'd rather this been sewn in uh, or, or used buttons or something, but having that thick Velcro piece just feels very clunky and, and a little bit outdated, really. Uh, and it does spoil the visual because you've got to really persevere with this to make it look really neat uh, the way it should. Uh, his accessories are fun and I think they uh, they work very very well uh, but all in all compared to the Connery Bond uh, this is the weaker of the two figures ultimately I'd say this release is for ardent fans only those who really really love the Doctor No film and particularly like this character if you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon